What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. We got the bronze match. This is uh, the player who will receive third place at the Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship 2016. We got Matthew Casiro playing Monarchs versus Saichiro Kajihara playing Magic Specters. Okay, we saw him lost to we saw him lose. Excuse me, should I say to uh, to Blue Eyes? I believe there was an opening with a Pantheism and then an Allure of Darkness played. I do. I will admit, I really gotta like that um, that Vanity Sphere in the main deck. Uh, the card can be, I think it can be decent against Mad Specters. Um, Mad Specters, if they play a Centric Archfiend, they they definitely have outs to the card, and he not only plays it, but he has one in his hand. Uh, this is kind of interesting because this is a like a Speedroid variant of um, uh, Mad Specters. He's got it's got a copy of Terror Top in his hand. So Matthew is going to activate Pantheism. I believe he took out three Stormforce, so he just gets to add a Stormforce to his hand. We see Luster Pendulum, Archfiend Eccentric, Terror Tops, uh, Terraforming, and Solemn Warning. Uh, that's a it's an okay hand. Um, I like Archfiend Eccentric in any hand with Magic Specters. Like opening with it, it's back or removal, so your Pendulum scales can go off. It's a really high Pendulum scale. Which is really good. Uh, terraforming doesn't do anything for a hand that doesn't have any magic factors in it, though. It's actually pretty bad. So, Monarch should be looking to maybe tribute summon, get that return going. Oh, no, he actually does not. He actually just sets a card and passes. That is uh, definitely a card that might get blasted by Archfiend Eccentric. We'll have to see what he top decked. Yeah, what card did he add? Uh, the Luster Pendulum, also not so good. It, it's kind of really hit or miss in magic factors. Because if you do play it as, um, I believe it's a 5 scale, it does, yeah, I think Luster Pendulum's a 5. I think it, it does lock you out of pretty much going for, like, Karin, unless you play, like, if you play, like, Eccentric Archfiend and Luster Pendulum, then yeah, I guess. Because I think Archfiend's, like, a 7 scale, but then you can't Pendulum Summon any, you can't Pendulum Summon any match factors but Karin. Like, that's the only one that you can Pendulum Summon. Alright, so we see um, the Terra Top is played, and... Did he actually draw into a copy of uh, Take Tenberg, or are they saying he's gonna add that? Because if he drew, if he drew the Take Tenberg, that's really bad. And I think, yeah, you know what? I think he drew into it because if you notice, he didn't search. He played Take Tenberg and he did not search, which means he probably drew into that copy of Take Tenberg. Uh, otherwise, uh, why wouldn't he just search it? So yeah, he must have drew into it. Um, he'll probably want to go into an XC play here. I think Totem Bird looks pretty spicy. Uh, he could go into like blue layer, but I think Totem Bird's probably the card to go into. Uh, card to go into, and I did make a mistake in my last video um, with the whole mask restrict thing. I, I didn't even realize. I knew that Take Totem Bird could what's it called? Uh, looks like he's blowing up his eccentric Archfiend to get another copy of it. I knew it could negate spells. I wasn't sure about traps, but yeah, it negates one spell and one trap. So gets eccentric Archfiend. Um, looks like he's gonna. Played Terraforming, but to get his Majesty... Oh, you know what? He plays Sky Iris, so actually maybe Terraforming isn't that bad. He got Majesty's Pegasus, but Sky Iris is an option, I wonder. Yeah, okay, so he does search Sky... I was thinking about that. I was like, wait, why get Majesty's Pegasus? Get Sky Iris. That's a live card. You can blow up your Luster Pendulum, and you can get a live card. Okay, well, you know what? Terraforming is actually not as bad as I thought. I, I thought it was bad because I was like, well, if he only plays... Uh, if he only plays Majesty's Pegasus, it's terrible. But if he plays Sky Iris, then it's actually live. I wonder what he's going to search with it, though. All right. I think he played... Yeah, I think that's an Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. Okay. So that's an Odd Eyes Pendulum Dragon. He went to end phase, and then he'll probably search Raccoon. And he does. So he's able to get his Raccoon, which can get him going, get his Pendulum set, uh, set up. I mean, a Solemn plus a Totem Bird is a really strong opening when you've got a Raccoon backing you up for your next turn. Because, mm, especially when Monarchs just didn't do anything, like turn one. Yeah, Monarchs just didn't do anything. Uh, I, I'm not sure, man. Usually when you open up with Pantheism plus Allure, you have to think that your hand's pretty solid. All right, so he's going to activate Prime. And keep in mind, he can negate that. He can negate that with Totem Bird. If not, he will give Matthew a draw. The problem is, if you do negate that, it will go to the graveyard, and it can obviously trigger. All right, well, he chooses not to negate it. Those go back into the graveyard, and he'll get himself a draw. Uh, when I was running Monarchs, I ran three primes. I used to love setting prime. I know a lot of people don't set prime that much, but I used to love setting that damn card because 
lets me draw in them like maxis and valors and stuff like that that was when valor was a little better than it is right now uh because well it's not good against mad specters at all i guess okay so a little bit of shuffling archfina centric and raccooner in hand he has an archfina centric uh what's it called luster pendulum and he has a copy of oh he drew he has a copy of uh odd eyes and his uh what's it called odd eyes on top of his uh his to on top of his um extra deck so he drew escalation which is not really good without a field looks like he might go for Stormforth to force the negate still has solemn warning though so he might not even he might not even negate that i would probably i mean usually you just use it or lose it so i would just go ahead and negate and could it be a okay there's going to be a tenacity he's going to reveal that copy of uh what's it called he's going to reveal that that uh aether and he's going to get another monarch stormforth would you think maybe he might go for vanity's fiend here would that be the play keep in mind prime is now live as he has two monarch spells and traps in his grave he could obviously play uh prime looks like he is going to activate the monarch stormforth does not have to tribute immediately he is then able to activate return. He now says, I am ready to tribute. And Solemn Warning will probably be played. Yes, Solemn Warning is played. He will not be able to search for return, but he could obviously use Prime and get another card back. I actually don't really think. Um, I actually don't think. Wow, he did not. Did he not use. Uh, I think he may have just ended his turn. He did end his turn. I would have thought that he might have wanted to. Um, I, thought that, I thought he might have wanted to use Prime to see what he could have drawn. Because you never know. I mean, maybe a top deck of one for one. I don't know if he plays one for one or not. He has return. He has escalation. He has aether. But he doesn't have anything to summon. Uh, well, he doesn't have anything to tribute. And uh, Solemn Warning just coming in too clutch right now. Yeah, match factors are looking really good. He's in a really good position. Should be able to commit a full pendulum play here. And actually, he could OTK depending on... Depending on how he plays this out, he could definitely see. Oh, he got Fox. That's an that's an excellent top deck. All right, so he must have normal summoned Raccoon because he's immediately looking into his deck. And I think you're just trying to get full Pendulum. Well, you already have a seven. You have a seven and Eccentric Archfiend, so you could just search like a two scale, like a Karen. You could play that. Just Pendulum summon everything. Uh, although you could not Pendulum summon Odd Eyes, which is a little difficult. But he could potentially go for an Ignister play here. Yeah, he could go for a, a possible Ignister play, spend some stuff, do some massive damage. Just the card, what card does he plan on searching right here? That will be the question. Yeah, what card does uh, Saichiro plan on searching? And, um, I mean, I'd have to think that he's going to get a couple of traps. So I'd have to say that he's in commanding position. I believe he may have just used Sky Iris as well to get rid of his uh, his Magic Spectre Raccoon. Mm, yes, he did. Cause match. Oh, he plays odd eyes. He plays um plays odd eyes unicorn. Well, now he's got he's got super wide scales if he wants them. Yeah, cause well he can actually pendulum the odd eyes now because he doesn't have to use archfiend eccentric. He can. Oh, he got Karen. Yeah. Well, he's gonna use Karen as a scale though. Hmm. Okay. And here comes the mass pendulum summon. Huge pendulum summon. It's gonna bring out archfiend eccentric. It looks like he's bringing out odd eyes. I think he has two and eight. Those are his scales. And I think he's actually calculating the damage to see how much damage he actually has if these attacks all go through. Looks like he calculated 6350, and he's looking to see, do you have a prime in your grave? Because if not, I'm just going to kill you. Yeah, he even summons everything in attack mode, and I think that that's game. Yep, GG. All right, that's the easiest uh, game one you're going to have with match specters. You, yeah, you didn't even, you didn't have to really even wall up. Usually when I say wall up, I mean whole bunch of like tornadoes and tempests and stuff like that he just you know sometimes magic specters can go offensive but i think his build is a little more offensive because he plays like most versions of magic specters don't play like odd eyes pendulum dragon they don't play odd eyes unicorn um even though odd eyes unicorn isn't really an offensive card uh, odd eyes pendulum dragon being 25 definitely is so game one goes to magic specters now i'm watching this live so i can't obviously fast forward but um i don't think it's the greatest matchup for monarchs because um, I don't know. It seems like what you do doesn't affect Magic Specters as much as what they do to you. With them being able to like banish all your cards. If you play now, if you played March of the Monarchs, I think the matchup gets like much easier because if you get that out, then 
they can't really do anything because like all your magic specter affects targets or destroy even Corin is not an issue it's not a threat at that point but i don't think i like i haven't seen a monarch player run march of the monarchs in a long time even when i was playing it i only played one copy and sometimes i would side it out but then sometimes i'd be like man i really wish that i had it in there stops those effect veilers it can stop solemn strike even if solemn strike is used on your monster uh your monster doesn't get destroyed but although some people have learned to you know do the whole return thing where you can essentially make your opponent miss the opportunity to use solemn strike as long as you have a return if you're uh building your chain links right all right so we're gonna see some shuffling what are what are monarchs gonna play well as much as i hate to say this you could go anti-spell fragrance i know in monarchs it would seem extreme but it's an option i'm just saying anti-spell fragrance against any pendulum deck is effective because it just stops their ability to pendulum summon and he plays field spells which makes it even more effective because if you play field spells versus anti-spell fragrance it just takes you it takes forever like you just have to sit there and you have to set the card first and then you have to like wait a turn and flip it over and it's just like oh man it's just it's just no one wants to deal with that it takes too long all right so looks like siding is done shuffling will resume so not sure if america did so hot in this event uh, i mean we did it we did okay uh i know one player in the finals is japan so japan is looking to potentially win this thing back to back man japan is going back to back australia doing really well at this event too i didn't think monarchs would be this strong but i guess even without pantheism if you add in things like trade in and allure of darkness there's just like other draw cards that make the deck like still very fast all right looks like double shuffling double pile shuffling sometimes i feel like if you over shuffle it just doesn't like sometimes i feel like i get i get worse hands when i over shuffle like i think one eight card pile shuffle is enough i like i'll do an eight card pile shuffle or an eight pile like uh i'll do an eight pile shuffle and then i'll just do a little more shuffling and then i'll like cut twice and then i feel like that's fine or sometimes i'll do two four uh four piles but it should be pretty good Man, that Yugi versus um that Yugi versus Kaiba match was so awesome. It was it was better than the Jaden versus uh Yusei match. I mean, that thing had everything. That thing uh that match should be going up on my channel um right after I'm done recording this one. It'll it'll be up there fairly soon. Looks like he's just talking to the translator. And yeah, I I'd, I'd, I'd assume that Konami probably provides translators for all of the languages if needed because, I mean, you can't expect somebody who just happens to win a tournament, um, like a, a a world championship qualifier, to just have a translator on staff or something like that. Like that's not it's not practical for players. I think it's pretty awesome if you if you play Yu-Gi-Oh and you end up getting like you end up going to worlds and I mean just speaking as like an American, if it was in like you know. Uh, I guess like Belgium or like you know Berlin, like some of these foreign countries. Foreign for me, I mean, I'm sure lots of people live there. Tokyo, Japan's, you know what I mean. Rio de Janeiro, they have the Olympics there right now. Toronto, Canada, like big cities across the world. Venice, maybe somewhere in uh, Greece. That'd be awesome. All right, so let's see if monarchs are going first. In this match i think with monarch i mean you probably need to hit like erebus turn one i mean to make your turn one kind of worth it also i don't really know about vanity's fiend in this match i think i'd probably side it out I wonder if, if he's playing majesty's fiend majesty's fiend would be much more effective um wow once again we just see a set one pass that is literally the oh my goodness he bricked to all uh, he's playing majesty's fiend he sided it in again yeah well that's what i would do i'd take out vanities for majesties but he bricked the holy hell. He has return Aether, Aether, Majesty's Fiend, and a set card. That is bricking to hell and back. Personally, I didn't like to go first with Monarchs. I always, went to, I always chose to go second. Double, this could be literally losing turn one. Because I assume he's going to Eccentric Arch Fiend at back row. This is terrible. No, he drops out Fox. Okay. And that'll get him a Tornado, maybe. Either a tornado or a tempest. I, I think I think this could be a complete blowout. I'm not trying to like uh, 
not trying to demoralize anybody, but I think this could be. I mean, he this is this is why people call Monarchs a brick deck because when you get a hand of like three tributes and a return, and you went first, like what are you supposed to do with that? Like your four of your cards are completely dead. You can't summon anything. Like imagine if that's like a Stormforth. That means he has like one play, and it's a play he can't even do right now. He has to like wait and hope that he doesn't get like blown out. But I thought maybe he might open up with a Centric Archfiend to pop the back row and just see what it is. Because what, what could the back row be other than a Pantheism that would, like, do anything? And a Pantheism wouldn't even do anything until the next turn. He has Effect Veiler. He has Double Tornado. And he has Double Archfiend. Looks like he's going to swing. Yeah, I'm I'm shocked he, is not, he didn't have Centric Archfiend that. And then just go for, like, Fox into um, Get Fox. Maybe play Pegasus and then, you know, uh, what's it called? Tribute for tribute for Bampaku, but yeah, if I had double eccentric archfiend, I would I'd use those immediately. Cause I don't I don't like I don't like the unknown. The unknown I don't care what that face down is. If it's if it's a blood like I don't want any unknown. I mean if a monarch player just has four cards in hand, you just assume like I would assume they're bricks. I wouldn't assume he has some god hand that he's waiting to play. I would kind of assume that they're bricks. The first thing I would want to do is know, hey, that card on field, what is it? Let's just get rid of it and see what it is. If I had one Eccentric Archfiend, maybe I'd hold it, but he has two of them. He might want to try and Pendulum Summon here. I think he's trying to get his scales together. But he'll have to use Mag... Like, you're not going to Pendulum, even if it's Monarchs. Because I, I, you know, I used to side in Solemn Scolding, so... I would assume he's going to play Archfiend against the back row. I just thought he would have done that before doing any of this. Because he could have done like he could have done way more battle damage. If he just would have archfiend, and he just would have popped the uh, the face down, then he would have went tornado or excuse me, he would have went uh, match factor fox, tributed it for um, tributed it for uh, what's it called for raccoon, and then he just would have pendulum summoned everything back. Like he'd have, he'd have done way more battle damage. It's a fairy win. See, you end up losing your card. You end up losing your um. So he ends up losing his Majesty's Pegasus for no reason at all. He could have just literally opened up with Archfiend and just popped the back row, and he wouldn't have lost anything. I mean, don't get me wrong, he can still Pendulum Summon, but it's just like, I, I don't know. He, he could have done this, like, he's probably still going to win, because Matthew's hand is, like, beyond brick. But he could have done a lot better than what he actually did. Unless he doesn't have, maybe he doesn't have double eccentric. It's just, it says right here, double eccentric. So that's what I'm going on. Like, I can't actually see his hand. It just says cards in hand, eccentric, and another one. Obviously, he played one, but still. Pot duality needs to fix his hand immediately. No. Monarch Storm 4th looks okay here. Yeah, the Monarch Storm, well, no, actually it doesn't. Maybe you might want to take, you might actually want to take Fairy Wind, because I forgot he lost his uh, Vandy's Fiend to Solemn. Oh no, he has well he has Majesty's Fiend. Okay. Wait, no, what's what, wait, what am I saying? Did he I think he summoned Majesty's Fiend and lost it. Or did he go yeah, okay. I'm 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 confusing myself. With the cards in hand versus the cards that were played. He takes Monarch Stormforth. I'm I've got Vanity's Fiend on the brain when he has Majesty's Fiend. But I'm not actually sure if he even has it. The the thing about it is, um hmm. The, the second, actually, to be honest, if he's able to somehow get a Majesty Fiend on board, he could, especially if he tributes with uh, Return on board, he could probably win. Because uh, he'd, he'd get a, he gets so much searching. Let me look. All right, let me see. He activates the Monarch Stormforth. It's in out the Magic Specters. Do you have a Majesty Fiend? Yeah, he does. Actually, this, yeah, this could be a totally game-changing play. Okay, yeah. Wow, this could be such a huge play. As he's able to get... He's, made, he's able to make the tornado lie or dead. And he should be able to get a search here. And the Eccentric Garchmine is not an out to the, uh, what's it called? Is not an out to the Majesty's Fiend. Although I guess technically he has double tornado, so he could just summon something. All right, I think he might be reading Majesty's Fiend. The question is, what do you search here? Yeah, what do you search? Um... Because actually, you just think more monsters does it. Like, he has double Aether in his hand. Like, more monsters, I'm not really sure, helps. He gets Erebus. Like, you know what he needs? Like, an Allure or something like that. He needs draw power. Like, an Allure would help him. I just have to see if, um... 
if Saichiro, if he, if Sorichiro has a, if he has a, um, a match specter in hand, if he has a match specter, obviously he can normal summon it. It wouldn't get any effect, and then he could obviously tornado away the, um, the what's it called, the match CC. That's why, that's why you gotta play March of the Monarchs. Just one copy, just one copy. Stop all the targeting of match specters if you're trying to blow them out. But I just think this card is super good against them. Match these. Oh my goodness. No, he doesn't. He has a Centric Archfiend, a Veiler, and a Tornado. Wow. None of those cards do anything to match these fiend. This is this is really bad, potentially. He needs to get a match specter. And he got one. Okay, he got lucky. <laughs> nice top deck. He actually got his uh he got a fraud or a toad. Because I was thinking, I was like, does he actually have a match specter? He does not. I mean, granted, he can get he still won't be able to do anything. All he can do is summon toad and activate tornado, and that's it. Uh, Toad obviously won't activate the Archfiend. I guess you could play the Centric Archfiend to pop the return. I don't think I would. Yeah, I, I don't think I would. I think Sorichiro has misplayed. I think he's misplayed the situation. I think he should have done so much more turn one. I think he let his. I think he let his, he let his Pegasus get destroyed for no reason at all when he could have just thrown Archfiend at it. But I mean, I guess those are judgment calls. You would assume that the play here. Is to normal summon Toad and just tornado and get rid of the Majesty's Fiend. Because you can't do anything. I would not give them a... Oh, he's going to set a card. No, dude, that's not the play. The play is to summon Toad. I know it's not a good play. It leaves you exposed. It's your. It's literally your only play here. It, he might be thinking of a setting effect Veiler and just stalling. But you have Tornado. Use it. Like, okay, he, he chooses not to... All right, he just chooses to set... I do not agree with the. Oh, whoa. The Monarch Stormforth was revealed off the top of his deck. That was an accident. And it looks like he top decked Tenacity. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if they were going to make him shuffle or not. Okay. So I, I don't think that they're. All right. So. I don't think they're gonna make him shuffle. It's just it just goes back on top. Plus he has a searching card, so his deck's gonna get shuffled anyways. If he does activate um, tenacity, I'm not sure that there's anything great to get. Actually, you know, I might even get prime here, so I can start getting those those monarch spells and uh, traps back to my deck and start drawing. Wait, hold on. Okay, seems to be some. What's the question? Is it or? Oh, okay, so it looks like they're pausing because of that, uh, because of the Stormfort being revealed. That's what I, I thought they were just going to play through it, but I, I thought, like, on Dueling Network and whatnot, if that happens, usually the card is just, you get, like, a warning or whatever, and the card just is returned to the top of the deck, and, like, it's not a really advantage gained for Matthew because... So Ichiro, he knows what the card is. So it's like, he knows the information as well. Both players know the information. So it doesn't really, like, benefit either player. Now, if only you knew what the card was, then I feel like it benefits just the player who, you know, made the mistake. But I feel like neither player really benefits off of that. But it looks like they're trying to figure out. I mean, there won't be anything more than warning. Ah, okay. So yeah, that that's what they're trying to debate right now. Yeah. They're debating on what the. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. I thought that it should just get put back on top of the deck with both players knowing, because if it gets shuffled back, then it could only it could only benefit the player who like did the mistake. Because I mean, I guess it could be the ideal top deck for them, but only that player knows that. Like, so Ichiro doesn't know if that if that um if that Stormford makes his makes his uh like Matt's hand better or worse only Matt knows that because only Matt knows his hand so I feel like it should just go back on top of the deck that's the only way that's like the most fair way that you can resolve this because that card could be godly for him it could be terrible but only Matthew knows that so if it gets shuffled back it could only benefit like it can't really uh I mean it could benefit Soichiro but he doesn't know if it'll benefit him or not as if they both know what the card is, then, you know, they both have equal knowledge to it. They both have the information. I don't agree with him setting, though. I think he should have just gotten Majesty's Fiend off the board and then maybe look to do something next turn. I think he might be looking at his hand and thinking, if I get rid of Majesty's Fiend, I still don't have anything. And I have to get, like, I still, I'm still exposed. 
But I still think he should have gotten rid of it because leaving Majesty Sphine on the board ain't going to help him. It just isn't. I think Majesty Sphine is so much better than Vanity Sphine in this situation. And we'll just have to see exactly what plays out. We're still waiting on, I guess, the ruling. Uh, okay, so I guess they, I guess they're ruling it that the card's gonna get shuffled. I'll, all right, I, I disagree with that, but you know what? I'm not an official Konami judge, or you know, so the card will be shuffled back into the deck. I guess that's uh, the official ruling for this event, but I don't really agree with that because again, like the only person who knew whether that was gonna benefit Matthew or not was Matthew. Because Sojiro doesn't know what his hand is, so I don't know. That was just weird, but. Alright, I think. Looks like he's going to tribute summon for Erebus. And. This is interesting because. I don't know. I kind of like I kind of like the way that. That Majesty's Fiend was kind of rocking right there. Tornado's going to be used on Toad. And he changed the Feg Veiler. Wow, man. Okay. All right. So what's gonna be the play? Um. Hmm. Yeah. What's gonna be the play here? I'm gonna read this right quick. I'm gonna listen to this. So I think he's saying that he'll still search. So Erebus won't even resolve. And actually, that was my fault. I totally didn't realize that uh, you could use Tornado on a, um, a face-down match better. So, so Jiro, has made, he's been making the right play. That was actually my stupidity. But I, I, don't, I, don't think I, I don't think I really like that play of tributing for Erebus because you do open yourself up to Effect Veiler. You would, you'd have to assume people are going to side it against you. It's, like, like, it's not like match specters can side Mask of Restrict versus you. So... That card was dead. He could have just a, maybe just attacked. Um, I mean, he had tenacity and he had the field, so we'll have to see what act, what what actually happens here. The return will definitely resolve, and he'll be able to get a search. But his hand is still so cluttered with monsters. Maybe he'll get another. Uh, well, maybe he'll get like the third Erebus. Maybe he'll get like a Karaz. Maybe even get uh, another copy of Majesty's Fiend. That wouldn't be bad. Question is, what does he actually want to get? Uh, you, he still needs some way of getting these damn mon like a trade in would really help. Although a lot of players with monarchs they don't like trade in. Some people just run like one. I mean, he could get like what? Yeah, I, I think I think Prime searching Prime might be decent, but I don't know if he has enough. Like he would need four spelling traps in his grave to really make it worth it. He's played a couple of Stormforth, then he'd have the Tenacity. I think that'd be three. So I'm not sure if he has any other spells and traps, unless his like return got destroyed somehow. I think the I think Prime seems like a decent search option. Looks like they're going for a ruling. Okay. Let's see what their ruling is going to be. I'm going to keep the volume up or the volume on, just for this. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, so they're bringing up Light Imprisoning Mirror. Yu-Gi-Oh! and your rulings. Okay. <laughs> People thought that Light Imprisoning Mirror negated Honest. It definitely does not. Because, uh, yeah, I see what they're saying. They're saying that when a card, uh, where a card activates is where it resolves. So some people may have thought that Honest was negated by Light Imprisoning Mirror because Honest is a cost. It goes to the graveyard. So people are saying, oh, it's in the graveyard. It must be negated. Like, no, Honest still, just because it's not in the hand doesn't mean it's not where it, uh, where it actually, like it activates in the hand, which means it resolves in the hand, even if it isn't actually in the hand. So... Hmm, they got a lot of uh, judges on this one. They can't seem to res can't seem to figure this one out. They've got four judges right there, including one more guy. Or well, 
I think those two are just uh doing like written coverage or whatever. Hmm. It's take wow. This is actually surprising that it is taking um, it's taking this many judges uh this long to figure out the rulings. Tells you this game is not the easiest, man. This game is complicated. They're showing some prizes. I believe those are backpacks. Um, looks like some mats, uh, cards, and then the actually more cards inside of cases with more mats. Okay, that feeling when you can't figure out a ruling, so you start showing the prizes on stream. All right, sit back, relax. This could be a long one, boys. That card, those cards look so good. Those prize cards, I just it, it sucks that they you just can't play them. Like I, I really wish like those were cards from like Raging Tempest or something like Invasion Vengeance, like TCG exclusive cards or something. The artwork is just so fantastic, and no one will just ever really have them. You know. Also, can you? take those cards out i feel like you can't take them out of the the casing like are they stuck in those in the casing forever or like can you remove the card i'm wondering about that can you actually like remove it? i mean i know the card can't be played in a duel but that's not the point you could play it for a fun duel with like your 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 cousin or friend it's a water monster the artwork looks so good it looks on it looks kind of similar to norton like it was a maybe it was like a young elder entity norton or something like that They've got to use so oh he's the psychic one. Okay, so the other one's the fairy. Dude, they gotta take that artwork and they have to release that as like another monster. Use use literally the same artwork, just in a different pose. <laughs> there's no way you can use something so good. And then there's the other one. Okay. Looks pretty good. Not as good. That's the Earth Fairy. Yeah, it doesn't look as good as the uh the water one, but but I still think it looks pretty good. Alright, let me see what the ruling is. Yep, Victory Dragon was legal in the OCG, and it got banned. Effects like that actually shouldn't be legal, but they make some very cool prize cards. Yeah. So oh, I like how my man has the uh, he's got the Chaz he's got the Chaz around his neck. I've noticed that a lot of uh, a lot of the judge staff and a lot of the Konami staff have um, they're wearing those like uh, little card necklaces, and they have like different characters. I've seen some Yusei's, like Jaden, so they've got like characters from the anime and whatnot. Now he's shaking his head no. Matthew's shaking his head no, so he must not like the ruling. Conference is still going. Yeah, over. I think that was Joe. Uh, God. He, they must be telling him that he cannot resolve Erebus. Yeah, actually, that's what I think just happened. They just, oh, okay, they ruled that he cannot resolve Erebus. It does negate Erebus. It does negate Erebus. Okay, so yeah, that's what they were saying. I don't understand why he thought that it wouldn't... Well, I guess he. Oh, I get. I get what he was saying. He's saying that Erebus wasn't on the field from Erebus wasn't on the field from Mad Spectre Tornado. Thus, it should resolve because it's no longer on the field for Effect Veil to negate. That's the only thing I can think of. We see the blind MST for um, Typhoon, and looks like he has his scales. All right. Well, obviously, Sochiro is pretty much golden now. I mean, if you can pendulum summon all of these cards, I think it's a two and a seven. Like, uh, yeah, he can actually, I think he can just win off of, if he can pendulum summon everything, he probably just went off of damage. Because the only thing on the field for Matthew is the return. And yeah, those monsters are little, but I think he's just going to trigger all four effects. That's ridiculous. I think this duel is over. There may be a little bit of controversy, but... Honestly, I don't think he needs to get these cards. I think he can just basically attack and win. I don't know if he plays Cowboy, but if he did, then that would definitely be game. Uh, not to mention, if he hasn't normal summoned yet, whatever he gets from Raccoon, he could just normal summon. So he could literally just get another Raccoon, throw it on board. and I mean, he... Wait, well, you know what? Actually, no, because Cat only has like 100 attack. I just forget. Yeah, I just realized that. Cat only has 100 attack. Okay, so he's adding up the damage. And... That 100 attacks not doing so much. He has a grand total of 59. So, or excuse me, 49. He needs to find 700 more damage. Which can just be another, like, Magic Path the Raccoon. He's got... Actually, no, he's going to have to exceed. I'm sorry, he has 5 monsters on board. Yeah, he has 5 monsters on board. He's going to have to exceed. Um, I would go for, I'd go for, like, a rank 3. Use your, uh, use your Archfiend and use your Cat. Because they only have, what, 1300 damage? It's not a lot of damage. 
use those to exceed and then just search like I don't know a good vanilla four or something get toad get a copy of like you can just get anything man like you should definitely be able to close this out it depends on what exceeds he has but you should be able to win this game this turn he gets Karin okay maybe he doesn't think it's possible for him to win this turn I guess based on his extra deck all right so he is gonna exceed but not using the eccentric arch fiend. that's the card I thought he would go for I thought he'd I thought he'd use the the arch fiend and the the cat the cat he needs to exceed with it's not doing him any damage he only has a hundred attack he needs to get that off a of board and he goes for the tribute summon and that should be enough GG and uh, yeah monarchs kind of got wrecked there I, I don't know there to me it seems like some misplays in game two some definite misplays by my commentating but I hope you guys enjoyed I'll come back with the finals